Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me on a very exciting day here in California on the Where's Shmi US Edition Tour and not because of the Bugatti Chiron or the Ferrari 812 Superfast or even because of the Koenigsegg Regera but today to take a look at this crazy McLaren Sabre. The spec on this car is wild. It's in Amazon Colorstream. We're going to take a good look at it but my friend Mike has introduced me to the owner of these hypercars. We're going to be heading for a drive in the Sabre from here over to see the other hypercars in the collection. So in addition to the Bugatti, the Koenigsegg and the McLaren, a few more a little bit later on, but this is one of 15. It is a very, very special car. Today, it is all about the McLaren Sabre. Just take a look at these two cars sitting side by side with the Bugatti Chiron opposite as well. But the McLaren Sabre sitting next to the Koenigsegg Regera, Sweden's finest, one of 80 in total that Koenigsegg are making. This car in the white with the exposed carbon up through the center as well. But today, is all about this, the McLaren Sabre. As I said, one of 15 in total that McLaren are making of the Sabre, all here in the US. The car is built to US homologation standards, which means a few things that can be done differently to say a car that was going for global homologation. But this particular Sabre is number eight out of the 15 with the wildest of specs. From the crazy flip paint to all of the colored accents that you can spot around, some details underneath the surface as well that we'll take a look at, the pinstripes and different elements. This is a truly spectacular machine with the craziest of specs. We'll pull it on out of the garage, take a proper look at it before we're going to be heading out on board to go out on the road. The first thing is to get this car started, but before we do that, we need to unplug the SeaTac charger that we have down here. Now, this is a slightly interesting and unusual solution. The center has a nose bridge at the front, which has a release button. You can press it and open. In this case, you unplug the socket there. We'll just put this to the side for the moment. But to close this back down, you actually need to use a specific key that you have for the car inside. There are buttons just inside here to open it up. We're inside you can see some of the details, the color being carried through these pinstripes that you have around the seats. Also on the steering wheel, look at that. The tinted lacquer on the carbon that you have for the steering wheel. Then back here in the small storage area in the bulkhead, we have the little kit of tools, including this, which is exactly what we need to use right now, the specific tool to do this catch on the front. Let's come around and just do this quickly. The way that you have to do this is to close it down using the tool in here and then give it a press, twist it into place and that now holds securely. So that is now closed. We can come round towards the other side. I'll just pop this in the seat for the moment. Got soft closed doors. Come round towards the other side. Got the key as well. A double press of the unlock button actually pops the doors open. Take a careful seat inside here before we can get the four litre twin turbocharged V8 started up. We've got the button up on the roof. One press to turn on the ignition, foot on the brake, and let's get it started. The sound of thunder and power. You've got grab handles just here to pull the doors down. And then we're gonna pull, pull the car back out oh, and have a proper look at it outside in the daylight. Does this not look like a completely different car when it's now outside? The colors from the Amazon color stream, those bright green brake calipers, but all of the MSO details, for example, the center locks painted with the same color as the body. If you look around, you can see the pinstriping details aligning all of the carbon fiber as well. Even this pinstripe around these main quarter panels over the rear arches in a slightly different shade to give you that light reflection to see more of the angles and the shapes. Then you come around towards the rear, look at the size of this wing, very much Le Mans inspired, hence the vertical brake lights that you have, this gigantic diffuser sitting underneath the center exhaust. And you can see a few raindrops just falling. Unfortunately, looks like we might have 
a little bit of drizzle ahead of us. Then you come round towards the front. Some things that are different about the Sabre to a car that would have been globally homologated, for example, the lower splitter can have a more sharp edge at the very front of it. Normally it would have to be a little bit more rounded if it was a European homologation, for example. The door mirrors, much, much smaller. Now an interesting thing about these is they're not actually electrically controlled. You do have to get out and adjust the glass yourself with your hands in this car because of the way that they're actually made. You've got some interesting details, as I mentioned, to do with the fuel. I nearly went for the wrong place for the door handle there. The fuel on the other side and the oil on this side, you press the button just here, that pops open, and even this gas strut is in the same colour as the bodywork. That's a very very smart the soft close as i said the shark fin that runs over the back 835 horsepower 800 newton meters of torque the most powerful combustion engine that mclaren have made the fastest two-seat mclaren obviously the speedtail and the f1 being a touch faster but this this is really something very very spectacular and we're about to take it out for a drive just look at that look at the colors look at the way you get those purples and blues that go over in towards the bronzes the bronzes and the oranges over the highlights towards the back, depending where you're looking at it from. So, back at the wheel of the McLaren Sabre. Not the first Sabre I've driven. Now, two of the 15. I did drive the car with the Triple F collection a couple of months ago, but the first thing you notice is that it's very similar to the Senna, just a little bit softer. It's a bit more of a GT in so many ways. This is probably the more sanitized car that the Senna in some form should have been. The car that is more suited to road driving. It's, it's still filled with luxuries and technology. It's just a little bit quieter. It's just a little bit calmer. The ride is a touch softer and all around more pleasant to be at the wheel of. You can, of course, press the Active Dynamics panel. You can put it into the various different settings. We've got it in Sport and Sport and in Manual. Start to drop down the gears, but even those are just a touch softer than they are in the center. Everything about it, though, feels very similar initially. The way it's set up, the way you feel in the carbon fiber tub, you can't see very much backwards at all. It doesn't shake and vibrate as much. It's just a slightly more normal thing to drive. The mirrors could be in a slightly better position, but pivoted just a touch off. Oh well. The shifts are lightning fast, the seven speed dual clutch that we're very familiar with from different McLaren models. But I suppose this is the ultimate incarnation of P15. The Senna, the Senna GTR, Senna LM, Senna Can-Am, and the Sabre. The Sabre being based on the mono cage, based on this four liter twin turbo, but obviously with a completely different look from the outside. And these things that are specific to the car being a US homologated vehicle, a car that is made just for this market with the customers all here, effectively commissioning it from the beginning with the code name BC03 from MSO, McLaren Special Operations, the start of special projects, the start of cars that I think are very Lamborghini-esque, the way Lamborghini have had the Reventon, the Veneno, the Centenario, and now the Cyan. We drive in towards the sun, put the foot down a little bit. We get some nice pops out of the thing. Obviously, on city streets, we can hardly completely go for it, unfortunately, but nonetheless, you get a sense of the torque, a sense of the power. This is the fastest two-seat McLaren that they've ever made. Faster than the Senna top speed, so slightly lower drag at the top end as opposed to the Senna, but a completely different profile and, and setup. It's not as fast on the short distance sprints and it won't be as fast around a racetrack, despite the size of the massive wing that it has at the rear. It feels really cool. It feels very, very cool. A different feel actually to my Senna because you've got a leather steering wheel as opposed to Alcantara, which just makes it feel that touch more luxurious to begin with. As opposed to being quite so hardcore, extreme and sporty. It's glad it's not raining. This little experience in the car, a short little drive, but hey, you have the opportunity to drive a crazy Sabre like this. What a dream, what an absolute dream, what a fantastic thing. Totally awesome, the view in the mirrors, the feeling in here. But it's very, very, very dailyable. How crazy it is. This actually feels quite Bugatti-esque in the sense that it feels like a car you can just you can just drive, you know, we've got stop start right now, everything's got nice and quiet on us and chilled out. Just all in all. I love what they've done with it. The only consideration I think everybody 
across the table with this is the price tag because these are circa three or four million dollars, which is about four times a center. Four times a center for small changes, but that's the price of exclusivity to have worked with MSO to make this car from the outset to be involved in the design and the process and part of everything to do with it. Just enjoying shifting and hearing as much of the engine as we can. <laughs> Obviously on Travail, well, as we certainly cold ground, need to be a little bit conscious and aware of what's around us too. Like the center, you get the flutter from the intake. As you hear the air being pulled into the turbos. at Spa from driving it on the Nordschleifer and I'd love to see how this is. Obviously different era, you've got an active diffuser on this. The first time McLaren have used an active diffuser on any car is here on the Sabre. So in some ways a test bed for things to come in the future perhaps in other models. Just it, it's, a, it's a funny one because it looks so radical but it feels so civilized relatively to, to other cars. It's more civilized even than the 765 LT. You're more chilled in here, more of a, a cruise than even in that car, which is the hardcore super series, uh, as opposed to even being in the ultimate series. I think this is part of the ultimate series. Obviously not one of the main production models like P1, Senna, Speedtail, and now Elva. Uh, more in the list with the McLaren X1, with the things to come in the future. Things we can't talk too much about right now that they're working on. Really, really quite easy and gentle and smooth and nice to drive. It's a very good road car. It's built, I think, in this style, more for an American market. Softer suspension, softer ride. You can go up into track and track modes. You get the dashboard folding down, you get that lower display. You can manually convert it should you choose. But more a, um, a softer experience and obviously a different feel second time around, being more concentrating on the car itself and I love the different colours you see. Purple on that arch, bronze over on the right hand side on that wheel arch. Alas, not the most experienced to be able to properly throw it through corners, but nonetheless. Yeah, this is really cool. After that little drive, have I got a view for you. Take a look in the garage here at three spectacular cars and one very angry dog. I apologize for the barking in the background, but this is one of 30 Pagani Huayra Roadster BCs. Next to it, the Ferrari LaFerrari Aperta. Next to that, the Pagani Imola, the car that I actually experienced with Mike about a year and a bit ago or so. But these three, plus the Sabre, plus that lovely Rolls-Royce Dawn just behind. What an unbelievable little collection. One of five, one of just over 200, one of 30, one of 15, spectacularly rare, very, very special cars. And this to drive is really a very interesting proposition, but the spec of this car is what makes it so crazy to me. It looks incredible. Now, like many others, when I saw the Sabre for the first time, the front end, I couldn't quite get around in pictures. And in fact, when I saw pictures of this exact car before it was even delivered, I really thought this was overkill. But when you see it in person, you can see some of the depth and the way the color folds and wraps around the different sections and the design and understand the complexities of it and start to see how it works in terms of the aero profile, the different cuts and openings, the shark fin to streamline it. You start to get a better picture of what it's all about and to make sense of it. Now inside there are a few more details 
as well to show you here on the passenger side just to pop this open have a look at the stitching the double contrast stitch that you have I really like this the light blue and the purple like in the paintwork on the exterior we've got the track telemetry cameras so the full camera system built in and linked to the data that's gathered by the car system itself an interior that's basically for purpose it's carbon fiber the tub just some floor mats and not really all that much else to keep the weight down as much as possible the Sabre logo here on the carbon fiber of the dashboard just the Alcantara pads over the top where required and of course for the airbag covers and a very small amount of storage back here where there is also the fire extinguisher just over to this side and the view through towards that 835 horsepower 800 newton meter 4 litre twin turbo V8 that you have in the bag pulling in the air through here the roof snorkel hence how you hear those sounds while you're driving it but the view out of the back you only really see through some of those openings and louvers in the rear deck so you don't get to see all that much now like the Senna in the US it has a much louder exhaust system than the European cars do and you can see the heat shield that it has here as well to protect the carbon fiber because I imagine if you drive this in anger flames probably come out of there we've also got this very aggressive motorsport style diffuser and in fact if you look down this is basically where some of the active aero is at play inside this to help keep the car streamlined at high speed but just look at this view how much opening there is underneath the rear wing the double layer to help with maximum downforce and overall performance just a car that is totally totally extreme and one really nice outside detail i haven't yet discussed let me close down the door quickly look here 03 bc03 the code name but look at the weave the way it's actually rotated 90 degree weave for the numbering on site on the kind of built inside i should say the overall carbon effect that you have on that panel just awesome just such nice details in this spec i think basically the way they worked with mso was that customers could pretty much choose anything they wanted in terms of the livery as part of the price for the car rather than the more tra traditional extra options costs depending what you'd go for hence things like the badge here that's under the lacquer at the front on the carbon fiber with that v weave running up the spine towards that part as well there's no opening at the front for storage or anything like that it's just reserved exclusively for that small space in the cabin behind the bulkhead then over here this view as well can't quite get my head around it i'm a little bit speechless this roadster bc is the car that really and truly stands out to me in the very bright lime green paintwork that that is really cool obviously targa roof panel you lift this off you've got the snorkel then right overhead the new design of this the world record production car at spa francorchamps in fact pagani did with their factory roads to bc named after benny Caiola, as we've seen many times with the bc coupes on the channel very very exciting one of my favorite cars really as i said recently when i drove one La Ferraris at the time I was more in the P1 camp a little bit later on I translated towards 918s but now the La Ferrari I think is the one that stands out and the Aperta which I drove with my friend Greg B a couple of years back in Sardinia is just the most epic of experiences the screaming naturally aspirated V12 but combined with the hybrid system and the instant torque and then the Imola is obviously quite a unique proposition one of five many distinct design features that are different to the BC and I suppose a vision at the time of what was going to come with the roads to BC as well but this collection has been very very special of course having left the Regera and the Chiron back at base when we sat off earlier what a thing though the McLaren Sabre yes there are things that I think could have been perhaps further understood about the car in terms of its positioning what exactly it's for but overall when you drive it it's just such a pleasant car to be behind the wheel of knowing how special it also is so a really 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 cool thing to have come today to see to get a small opportunity to be behind the wheel of a huge thanks to mike and to the owner of the cars for the opportunity today you don't see views like this every day that's it for now though thank you very much for watching as always guys and i'll see you again very soon cheers <laughs>